I'm Genoa. And I'm Mo. We're having the sex talk. The sex talk. So today we're going to talk about making peace with your fetish. I like this one yeah. a lot. So uh, you might have a fetish if you do, if you're being honest about it. And we find in our industry and also just in our lives that a lot of people feel shame around their fetish and there's a lot of shaming that happens around fetishes because let's be honest they're not all politically correct mm. they don't all make sense to other people and they're sexual in nature which already makes them kind of loaded right and they they have a um a hint of objectification a lot of times more than a hint sometimes and yeah. um so they seem there's, dangerous right. and non-consensual and mm -hmm. um there's a lot of power imbalance and sometimes abuse and, right uh, humiliation lots of humiliation involved sometimes um, in people's fetishes mm -hmm. race did we mention racism sexism violence um there's a lot of all of that and really that's edgy stuff yeah <laughs> yeah um, so one that we talked about earlier was cuckolding mm -hmm. and actually you had a really interesting fact about where the word cuckolding came from it was originally this idea uh, if you were being cuckolded it meant you were being forced to raise uh, a child that wasn't biologically your own if you're a man yeah, yeah a man forced to raise a child that wasn't bi biological so basically your wife cheated and you have to raise the progeny of that right. cheating so today I get, do get a lot of um, inquiries from people that want a cuckolded fetish fantasy they want to fulfill it um, but it, it it's not about raising someone else's child per se not they anymore. they feel like they want to be humiliated they want to see their woman with someone with a much bigger dick than they have um, so you're being pleasured and satisfied and creating a humiliated state in, in mm -hmm, them mm -hmm. and that's their fetish that turns them and on. and that turns them on and um, and um, there's all sorts of racially tinged ones, mm -hmm. um, and these are just not politically correct. You know, it's not mm. necessarily cool to want to see your wife having sex with someone else. It's not necessarily cool for a man to have a high heel fetish, although that one's probably more accepted than it's some. not. It's not cool to be Jewish and have a little Catholic girl call you a kike and that turn you on. I mean, mm. these are the things that I've Rape, seen. Rape, fantasy. It's not cool it's not for cool. women to have a rape fantasy or fetish. And a lot of these fetishes and fantasies are things that you might not, probably, I would say a large portion of the time, might not actually want to act out. But sometimes you do. And um, I think this episode is really about recognizing that your fetish is okay. We don't get to choose our fetish, right? So we have to make peace with just the reality that we have a fetish and realize that we didn't choose it. So it might not make sense politically. It might not even align with us politically and what we believe in in our hearts and respect and love. And I would agree that most of the time it doesn't align and that's why it causes so many people such, you know, like cog, uh, D dis cognitive dissonance. dissonance. <laughs> cognitive <laughs> dissonance. Cognitive dissonance. That thing. Because it doesn't go along with your, you're a feminist and you want to have a rape fantasy. Not um, cool. You know, you're totally not, totally not racist against Catholic girls, but yet you have this, you know, whatever, you know, fantasy or fetish, fetish, you know, that you want someone to call you something racist. I mean, it doesn't go along with who we are and that's why it can cause some discomfort, but I yet think, yet arousal, extreme arousal. It's it's you can't I don't know it starts in childhood you right know, and we've and we've talked about that on another episode but here's the thing it 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 happens and it's some sort of a conditioning that happens at a time when you're just highly aroused and it's important for you to know that children are sexual they have mm -hmm. everything in full working condition at a really young age so they're getting aroused even though their brains not mm -hmm. necessarily processing what's happening they don't even know what's happening yeah sometimes. so these fetishes start when you were really young innocent yeah and innocent and they're based on innocence they're mm -hmm. based on you getting a feeling that's arousing and exciting from some sort of stimuli that's not in your control right and now it's a huge turn-on for you it's it's sort of built into your brain mm -hmm. you know I mean your brain as a child it's very plastic and it's growing at such an exponential rate mm -hmm. and if you have an experience you're you've grown a neural pathway 
and there it is. And that's yours. It's yours now. You know? So embrace it. If you want to, if you really feel the strong urges to act it out, there are ways to do that. Remember, we always right. talk about consent mm -hmm. between adults. Right. Safe, so, safe consent. And, mm -hmm. and very, like you were going to talk about this at length before you experience right. this fetish, you whatever explain you're, it with to professionals. Your, to your partner, mm -hmm. or you, you, you Bring explain in, it to your mm -hmm, dom, mm -hmm. whoever you go to. Your sex worker. Right. Whoever you've agreed to act this out with. Yeah, and do it in a healthy way. Don't that surprise anybody with it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Don't just surprise someone with your fetish scenario. Like, make sure it's all on the up and up. Yeah. And talk about it, set some boundaries around it. For example, if it's a little bit on the violent side, um, you know, there are types of role play that can mimic a violent setting, but that aren't really violent, that are based mm -hmm. on trust yeah, and boundaries. consent and communication and safe words. Mm -hmm. um, so don't be ashamed of it. You know that you can find places to either talk about it or if you do it alone in the privacy of your own home by yourself, great. No yeah. one gets hurt. No one has to know your fetish is, what did you say? They're very personal. Remember Yeah. those porn shows or, you know, adult videos that have your specific fetish Yeah. that is typically taboo in, in the everyday world. Right. And you can go on the internet and certainly you know, find other people that have the same type of fantasy that you do and talk about it and know you're not alone. Yeah. Yeah. So find someone to talk about it with if you need to, if you're mm -hmm. comfortable with it and comfortable with doing it by yourself and don't need to involve anyone, we say go for it. Go to town. Go to town. Um, just don't do anything that's going to harm anyone. Kids are off limits 100%. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, it's always between consenting adults, always. Right, right. With, uh, like, lots of preparation and very clear boundaries, and everybody knows what their job is, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And explore. Explore and see where it takes you. Yeah. It, it, it could tell you a lot about yourself. Yeah. I think that was the sex talk. I think that was the sex talk. The sex talk! Woo! Yep. Go. <laughs>